from not getting any call-ups in my life, I get two calls from two national team of Spain in two days. I was ecstatic. I was over the moon. I was just like, what is going on right now, you know? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Chump Chat. It's your boy, Johan Gomez, alongside my co-host, Santa Tessman. And today we have a very special guest, Colson Q player, and also USC 17 World Cup player, Neil Carrera. Welcome to the podcast, my boy. That's a pleasure. I've been waiting for my invitation for a long time. You guys started this chat a long time ago and just barely now getting the invitation. So uh, quite excited to be on here. Of course, of course. We had to. We saw the, the second league debut, which is huge. So we have to talk about that. But first, let's we'll start from the beginning. Just how are things? How, how are you enjoying the break? Uh, things are going well, man. The break is nice. You know, it's, a, it's the first break where, where I'm of age and uh, COVID is in as a as serious all over the world of course you're still taking care of yourself still still taking care of your loved ones but you can have a little more freedom in the sense of what you can do you know i was just uh, i've been spending time with my family went to cancun with my one of my best friends now i'm back home before i i go back out uh, to germany for preseason big time huh <laughs> no. i said of age okay okay of age man finally over 18 you well, of age everywhere except the united states so Obviously, I think, you know, I know that you got a concussion. The, the people might not know that you got a concussion towards the end yeah. of the season. So you got to home, go home a couple of weeks early. How are you healing from that? And are you ready to go now? I got to go home actually just um, just half a week early because they had to keep me there to to make sure, give me the green light to see if I was okay. It actually kind of sucked because it was the before the last two games of the season where I pro- probably would have gotten some playing time. And uh it just it happened in training. Got a got a nice little hit to the head. Stopped the goal though, as I told my mom. You know, at least I did my job. Uh, and so the ball just came at me pretty pretty hard, but I stopped it from a very close distance. And it actually, I thought it was going to be very simple, it was just going to be like one week off. But it was actually like a whole three week process of me finally being able to go back to being normal. I couldn't do school. I I could do some type of workout, but I really couldn't push myself. And it was just really weird not having the power to do anything or really do anything else to to help heal it other than do nothing, you know? Yeah, that's tough. Yeah, concussions are kind of, they're kind of tough to deal with because you can't, it's not like you can really even. They're iffy. Train or anything like that, right? You can't, you can't train. You can't do like therapy on them. You can't do, you really can't do anything. That's, and that's kind of like probably one of the hardest things not doing nothing when you have a problem that you want to fix, you know, and you know, that's the only solution. So it was, the, uh, it was kind of frustrating at times, but now I'm past it and I'm getting back into to rhythm, back into shape. And that's what, I mean, that's the goal right now. Yeah. I like that. Who who you been I'll, training with in off season? In off season. So in, in Cancun, I didn't do any, any training other than, uh, than cardio. And right now I'm just uh, doing with hop. He's always my go-to guy. He's always my go-to guy here in Dallas. Been working with him for almost three years now. No, I think three years for sure now. And uh, always my go-to guy when I'm back in Dallas. Always. He's a, he does top, top, top. He always does a top job. I think, Johan, you're working with him right now, Richard. Yeah, shout out Coach Hobb. I was with him yesterday. We were talking about you. Um, yeah. He was telling me, that's the hard thing about the concussion. He was telling me that you like were out for a little bit and that you're going back soon. And so like, you only had like 10 days to get back in. Like, yeah, I, I don't. I, I don't have I don't have much time to get back into preseason shape, but I mean, you do what you you do what you do with what you with what you have, and uh, so I'm gonna get do my best to get back into preseason shape, be ready for it, and you know, find a way find a way to be ready. That's the that's the only thing that you really can do. We want to take a quick break from the video to shout out our sponsor, BT Online. They continue to be the number one site for all your betting needs. Don't forget the NBA playoffs are going on right now. Who do y'all have? winning the NBA Finals. But uh, on a serious note, make sure to go to your mobile desktop, check out BETonline.com, and use the code BELIEVE for 50% off your welcome bonus. That's B-L-E-A-V for 50% off. Yeah. Let's talk about FC Dallas, though. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about FC Dallas. Let's talk about FC Dallas. I mean... What happened, bro? What happened what? What happened with FC Dallas? Why didn't they... Uh... Why didn't they want to sign you? Oh, 
That's a, that's a question you'd, you'd have to ask them. We, we did have some talks and, you know, at the end of the day, it just ended up working a different way. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm still, I'm still so, so thankful for everything that happened the way it did. You know, everything, I'm, I really truly believe everything happens for a reason. I think that, and I'm, I'm thankful and, and for the club for the way that they prepared me to do other things, you know, like they, they really are a top club. But then when we were in the academy playing together, we were always the best academy, always the best academy. And they really did prepare us for another level. Uh, so what happened, what happened, it all went very well in the end of the day. You know, I think I, I see my, I see, I see that was in a positive light, especially also my brothers here. I see the way they're doing things now. It's all very positive. You know, I think, uh, I think, I think in, the, in the sense they're still a great club and I think they're going to become one of the better clubs in the MLS in the next few years for first team as well. Hopefully, hopefully. I want to take it back, though. I want to take it back to maybe before U17, because I think U17 was the year that you played with me and Tan a little bit. Yeah. Um, that was the first year you came back, I think, from Pachuca. But talk a little bit yeah. about the story about how I think you were in the academy originally or at FC Dallas. And then um, I think you didn't make the academy. And then so you ended up going to Pachuca and making it there. Tell us a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah, no. So so basically what happened, it's an interesting story with FC Dallas, huh? Uh, for the pre academy, you know, I went and uh, I went and tried out for the pre academy. Tried to get it. Tried to tried to go for it. You know, that that was my goal. I actually was trying out as a midfielder slash striker. So quite interesting positions at that time. You know, maybe I would have taken your job, Johan. I don't know. Uh, but uh, but yeah, no. Basically, I did. I in my mind, I thought I did some pretty good tryouts. At the end of the day, I didn't even. Uh, I didn't make up. End up making the team. So that year was pretty tough. But you know. I kept my head high. Then, then the next, uh, oh, after that year, I didn't make the tryouts, and then I also didn't make the premier team. So I got cut from both the 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 academy team and the premier team in the same day. And for the people out there, premier team is the level below the academy. So I didn't even. I got cut from both of them, and I had no team. I had to find another team, and so I found this other team. This coach that kind of was picking up the scraps left, but by the premier team in the academy, making his own team. And uh, also for FC Dallas, an, an affiliate. And I joined that team. I have a great season. I build my confidence up again because really my confidence after that was completely torn down. A lot of help. I uh, got a psychologist, you know, that really helped me as well. And, and the next year I go into tryouts again, uh, this time as a six, with this, with all this confidence, all this, you know, all this, you could say, swagger. And once again, nope, I don't make the academy again. Uh, they caught me for two years straight. And after that, me and my, my dad finds an opportunity called Alianza. I didn't really know what it was. I basically, I go try out. I make the nationals, the finals. I go to the finals. I, I put out two, two really good games. And then I get invitations for uh, 12 to four, 12 official and two unofficial uh, invites uh, from academies in Mexico and the U.S. And that's, where, that's how I ended up actually going to Pachuca. And then I went and played almost one year, well, one year in Pachuca, one whole season. And then Lucci was actually the guy who ended up bringing me, who convinced me to come back to Taxi Dallas. That's, I kind of, I remember that story now, but I have yeah. to ask you, like, after two straight years of them cutting you, right, or you not making it, yeah. how do you keep it in your heart positive enough to say, okay, FC Dallas wants me back, I'm going to go back to them now. I know your family was there, obviously, but, you know, I mean, I feel like most people would hold a little bit of a grudge, no? No, of course. Of course. At that time, I was a I was a 14-year-old kid. Of course I had a grudge. Of course I had a grudge at 14 years old, you know, but that as you start to mature, you, you start to, you, you let, you let, you start to let things go. And, and, and not only that, but the behavior of the club changed. The behavior of the club changed from when I was, from when I was 12 to when I was 14, you know, like, I think, I think we both know the job that Lucci, Mikey, and these coaches did in the academy when we were there, you know, they, they did a great job when we were there. So they really changed the whole environment. And, and that's really what, what made, what made me let go of the grudge and love the club, you know, and I really, I really did feel like that, that happened. And uh, so as a 14 year old kid with a grudge, he came to FC Dallas, he, he won his place, won his spot climbed up the ranks just like you guys did and fell in love with the club. 
I do remember uh, the the first time we we played together. I think it's together or maybe against each other. Was uh, the, the it was like the the tryout on field five at FC Dallas, and it was like the O one group for the the next year, like the seventeens with Lucci, and you, he put you at center back. But it was like in the second half of the game. And I can't remember, we were playing, I don't know if Joan was there because you already, you know, you were with the big boys, but uh, I remember when he put you in, bro, and I was like, I was like, who is this kid, bro, for real? And then you did well, bro. You did well. You made some good tackles, and you played well. And obviously, I, you were, gave, I, think, I gave a PK away. I gave a PK away that game. I remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I gave a PK away. Yeah, you were, a bit, you were a bit nervous, I think. But at the end of the day, you did well. So I do remember that first time we played together. That was feel five I, I just remember being like who is this kid bro but it no, worked out good I, I, so i remember that clearly as well i was actually on vacation from pachuca and and lucci had a meeting with my with my mom and dad and uh and basically lucci invited me to go play and my mom and dad committed me to this game without me even knowing I, they just got home and say you have to go play a game here at this time and I, okay why not you know and of course i was nervous but i mean i had a good time and the what happened what happened after that was pretty nice you know and i don't i don't i mean as i'm sure some of the the guests know you we we play us three we played together for like what two years two three years yeah in the academy that was pretty yeah. nice our our age groups was really really good really really good. yeah i think well me and my brother talk about it but i'd say hot take i'd say the 98 probably around Weston's age to the 03 age group is probably, I know Antonio falls out outside of that category, but yeah, I think 98 to 03 is like the peak years of the Academy. Like you could probably name 20 guys who are like at a decent level professionally now. So Easy. I think no, no Academy touches that. Now I think me and Tan were talking about a little bit, it evens out a little bit more. You see guys like Philadelphia union, you know, I don't know, other academies that are pretty decent, but, uh, I don't think in that in those maybe five six years no no one touches SC Dallas in terms of production like it's no no or you can name like thirty or forty John yeah easily. to be honest I, I was think, being generous I, I, I think from the two thousand two age group I think you can name out of the eleven that we that were starters I think you can name seven seven or eight of us went pro and that's just crazy that's crazy production out of one one starting eleven group like that's absolutely wild. But don't get it wrong, bro. The old ones would have smacked y'all, just so you get that right. Like, don't be acting like y'all got some group, man. I remember y'all was like the the team that was falling behind. You know, we at the end of the day, we didn't win no national championship or anything, so we can't really talk yeah. or anything. We didn't need it really to be talk. fair, but we made it to the yeah, final. But you guys we made it to the final. You guys at least made it to the final. To the final. I mean, not, not just talking to trash. My brother was on that team, but like. If y'all are gonna lose, you gotta lose to someone outside your division. Y'all lost to Solar, man. Like, come on. That yeah, was that game, that, that game was that game was absolutely heartbreaking. Absolutely heartbreaking. Y'all got but, waxed by Solar. No, 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 no. No, no. the first was, the first was, time, no. When no, it was at uh it was at that field far away. It was at Solar's field. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, no. you know what I'm talking about, John. The, well, there was one game they got waxed. No, 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 no. I no, remember no, one no. game where where Nico. It was at it was at FC Dallas and bro, I I don't I didn't get on to Nico. I might have got on to you. I don't know. No, you did. You got on Latif and Latif got on me <laughs> because this they tied that he tied like last second to score against Solar and he he fucking went crazy. He started celebrating <laughs> yeah. like everything. Bro. I respect it because he doesn't score all the time, of course. No, but I remember I was, I was on the sideline. We were warming up and I was telling everyone I was like, well, "This is acceptable. Why, why are you, how are you celebrating the last minute tied to Solar?" And can't then I got on him after sport. the game. I was like, bro, you just tied Solar. You can't be celebrating like that. It's unacceptable. I don't think for I ever Phantom celebrated a goal versus Solar. For for the well, people of this chat, for the chump chat, I don't know if you guys know this, but so Johan is cold. Johan is cold. He when they when they made it past the, the group and made it to the semifinals in the DA, he they always tell the group not to celebrate, just put it cold face and walk away. Always you see all the other other groups celebrating and everything, Johan tell the whole group. Don't celebrate. Don't want to see a smile. We move on. It's expected of us. Hey, that was funny on. though. No, that's, there's a video. Uh, there's a funny. video where Tanner, where Tan, yeah. where Tan's putting the, the plaque on the final four. And we're all just yeah. like, this is a clapping. But that, yeah, that's just, what we were, bro. Just, we were cold, bro. Like we, we honestly, and then go walk away. 
bro, that's that was the thing though. That was that was our year. But to be honest, you know, things don't always go your way, which they didn't go y'all's way either. But also, we want to say before you you came on, we were admitting that. To be fair, it's not like our solar where we would smack them six zero every time we played. Like solar for y'all's age group that year won the championship, they so they were good. obviously good. But Tanner's convinced good. that they just they they were Barcelona around y'all one game. I don't remember that. There there was one game, bro. Bro, no, at that were, field. I don't remember the no, complex, no, no. bro. <laughs> they, they literally. The, it, I remember because we played won. after y'all, and I was watching the game, and I was like. How are they wearing FC Dallas jerseys out there? Like, this is crazy. I, I think I know what you're talking about the University of Dallas when we went and played there, I think. Aren't you? No, nah, it's a complex. So, like, there's more than one field. Like, there, it's a big complex. I don't know, they remember, were, though. I wasn't there. If they were, I wasn't there because I don't maybe remember it was, that either. Now, nah, maybe it was – Uh, I was playing with uh the, like, 01, 02 age group, and it was, like, the 03s or something playing or something. I don't know. But I swear it was the 02s, but I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah, because y'all played y'all played together the year that I left and you had you signed in February of that year, right, Dan? And y'all played together. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We played together. We won some Mexico. That was dope. Stuff. Y'all won the y'all yeah. won the SEMA tournament, right? Together? Yeah. yeah. That, hey, that, that was, was lit, pretty though. fun. That trip was pretty fun. I think my favorite part about that trip is truly waking everyone up at 2 a.m. to give us to give us Advil pills so we can be ready. Yeah. He said pastillas magicas for the game tomorrow. Yeah, that was crazy. No, yeah, that, that like, tournament was crazy. Like a long ass streak that they had, right? Something like yeah, that. They, yeah. Apparently, they hadn't lost a game in like six years or something. That was crazy. Boy, and they had all their boy, fans, yeah. bro. That was that was a lit tournament just because they acted like they were the stuff. And then Malik scored and went straight up to them like that. <laughs> yeah, that was dangerous. Chuki also <laughs> scored. I remember seeing that video. Yeah. And too cool, too cool. Bro, didn't, didn't the their fans like try to like not attack, but like they were like starting to come toward like run towards the fence when Chucky like yeah. went celebrated in front of them? No, That's that was funny. Malik. It was when Malik went like this in front of them. There's this uh there's this big uh, basketball guy that was just sprinting down. And I think this guy was like six foot seven, six foot eight, like he's just coming down. And I actually if you see the video, I was about to take Malik's spot because I was taking him back. And then if he would have thrown a punch, it would have been on me, not on Malik, because I was taking Malik's spot. So I'm thankful that the security guard stopped him before he got down there. That was funny. funny. But we talked a little bit about Dallas. Obviously, now you're in Kiel. Let's talk about that process. But before actually we get into that, because I want to talk about you represented the U.S. at the World Cup when you were still with Dallas. And I feel like for me personally, I don't know about Tam, but for me personally, obviously I knew you were good a great player you know you have a lot of personality a lot of leadership a lot of good qualities but for me it it just felt like it came like so quickly it was like Nico had gotten the call up or at least that I had known of and then all of a sudden he's like trying to decide between these two teams to go to the world cup like they're both fighting for him which I thought was crazy but it was cool so tell me about that I'd never gotten a call up never even gotten talked to until of like I think it was Two and a half months before the World Cup, three months before the World Cup, I've never gotten a single call up in my life. Like, not even, not even uh, uh, something saying, uh, you know, they're looking at you, you're being considered for a call up. Not even that. Not even that. So it was actually the, the DA tournament where he lost to Solar. Solar. After, after the loss to uh, Solar, a few hours later, I got called down by Chris Hayden. He calls me and uh, Diego Le down, and he says, you know, you guys are going to be called into the Mexican national team, U-17, and you might, you guys, if you make the final roster, you guys will go to Japan for to play a tournament. And that was just, like, the first the first time that I just, I had a call up, and I was, it was just, I was so happy, man. Like, I was so happy because I felt like it was a long time coming. I felt like I put in the work to, to get at least one call up somewhere, and I was, and it, and it just ignited this hope inside me that, okay, maybe I can make it to the U-17 World Cup because that was my goal at the time. You know, that that's where I think every player who has a chance wants to go. Uh, and so basically, uh, yeah, I got, I got the, I got the Mexican call up and then the, the U S was notified that I had the Mexican call up and they were notified that, that they, that I was going to get my American passport very soon in the span, in like in, in the two, three, in the next two, three weeks. So the next day, I just get a text from my, my agent saying that Rafael Wiki, who at the time was the U-17 uh, uh, head coach for the U.S., he says he wants to get on a call with me. 
And so basically the next day I get on a, I get on a call with a, with a wiki, a really good guy, really, really good guy. And he uh, basically just asked me if I'm open to playing for the U S and of course I say I am. And he personally invites me to a U.S. camp. So basically from not getting any call-ups in my life, I get two calls from two national teams in the span of two days. I was ecstatic. I was over the moon. I was just like, what is going on right now, you know? And so basically I go play in Mexico, go to Japan. We win the tournament. I come back 10 days later. I'm with the U.S. and California. And then after that, I have basically in three weeks, there's a tournament in the Netherlands where both Mexico and the U.S. are going. And basically that's where I, I have no more time. I, I have to... I have to decide which nation am I going to represent. And then that time I ended up choosing to represent the, the U.S. It was a really hard decision. But it, at the end of the day, that's the that's the decision I ended up making at that time. And actually, my debut with the U.S. as a, uh, uh, my debut with the U.S. was against Mexico in the tournament versus Netherlands. And we actually ended up winning 2-1. And, and that was a pretty, pretty uh, interesting night, to say the least. Interesting night, to say the least. Let me ask this, though. Obviously, yeah. I'm sure you're happy with your decision now. You got to play against Japan, right? You got to start against Japan. Yeah, I, I got to play against Japan and come in as a sub against the Netherlands. So that's a great experience. Obviously, you know, me and Tan have talked about that with a couple of the other guys on that team here before. How it was maybe yeah. sounds a bit of a failure considering how talented that group was. Of course it was. But you look at Mexico and a team that you guys, I think they beat you on Kokakaf, but y'all beat them in that Netherlands tournament right before. And you see them go all the way and get second place to Brazil and lose, honestly, last second because they, they yeah. were winning for a while. Does that did that make you feel some kind of way like, oh, I wish I was there? Or were you pretty, pretty content no, with your no, decision? No, 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 no. I think, I think in life, once you make a decision, you stick with it and you live with no regrets. You know, I made my decision. I was at the time I was happy with it, of course. And, uh, and uh, I was happy for them as well, for the Mexican national team. You know, I have friends that play in there that I still talk to to this day. You know, I was happy for them to get there. I was hoping they would win it. You know, sadly, they, they didn't. Uh, by a PK, I'm pretty sure that's how, that's how they lost it. Uh, but, yeah, of course, no. I, I didn't regret my decision at all. And they, uh, and uh, I was extremely happy for the whole, the whole team as a whole because really the people on that team were really, really nice, nice people. Let's let's talk about decisions though, because you said decisions, and yeah. um, I mean not not that you have a a big one coming out necessarily, but I mean, like you said, you're back open. I mean, you're cap tied to the U.S. right now. Yeah, yeah. If I were if I were to go to want to play for Mexico, since I played the U17 World Cup, which is a FIFA a tournament, I would have to do the whole process. So I guess that puts you more in the USA's field right now. But I just want to know: Have you had any contact from the USA team or the Mexico team? The communications are always open for both, for both national teams right now. The reality of it right now is my main focus has and still is, you know, club play, you know, really breaking through in the first team of Holstein Kiel, really starting to get consistent minutes, really starting to, to win to win a position that, that will get me uh, the, starting, the starting 11 more consistently. Uh, and so that's really is where my focus has been. I have not been really paying much attention to what is the national team. But of course, I know in the future, God willing, I will have a, I will have to make a decision again of who will I ha who will I, I have to represent at the men's section, the U.S. or Mexico. But right now, that's not a that's not something that's on my mind. It's a but I know that down the road, hopefully, it will be. I'll get a little bit more specific. Did has Mexico reached out to you for anything like I know you know like your boy Pisutos at that tournament over there now? Yeah. Um, anything like that? No, nothing, not, not, nothing directly like that. I just, I just know that the communication, just the communication is, uh, is open. I was, I was injured by the, for the, I was injured for, I, I couldn't do anything for these past, uh, for these past three, four weeks. So I, uh, there was, there, there has, there has been zero chance of me being able to do anything. There, there, it makes no sense for any contact to be made. You know, every, the, the people who, who truly follow me knew that so it, it doesn't really it didn't really make any sense but the communication line from the u.s is open and the communication line to mexico is also open you know it's a, it's about keeping the doors open and not closing the and to any opportunities that may come in the future with your current team 
What's yeah. like the what's like your goal and the team's goal for this upcoming year? This upcoming year just I think I think it's really just be stable. You know, that I think that's the that's the that's I think that's the team's goal in a way because this last uh first off first I'll get uh my goal is to break through in the first team. You know, get consistent minutes. You know that that's my goal. I'll, I'll, it's it's clear as day, but the team's coach is a little more, and I can go more in depth. It's just to be stable. You know, this last year we had really complicated year where I think most of the year we were in that relegation battle, which I'm sure you know, Tanner, is stressful. It's it's not nice to be in that club environment at the time. It's it's very difficult. You know, to be really when you fight for points, you're really fighting to stay up. You're fighting for the life of the club the livelihood of the players around you. And it's, it's, it's not the, it's not the easiest times around the club. You know, it's not all, all, all roses and sunshines, all roses and rainbows. It's, sometimes you have to have some very hard talks. I know, I know after a few losses, the general manager came down, sat us down and just went into us, you know, and it happens. It's okay. It's, it's a, he didn't go into us in any bad way. He just went into us into a reality check to get us motivated and go and get us going, you know, but these are conversations that are not easy to have. So the next year, for the, I think for the club is to be stable. And if we, and once we are stable, you know, hopefully fight, fight the way to promotion. But really last year we lost our, our head, our head coach resigned. We had to have an interim head coach. Then we had to get a new head coach and adapt to his system. So, you know, it was a whole process And this year, just keep building off what we, what we did uh, this uh, at the end of this season, which was really start to win a lot of games. <laughs> Yeah, um, I've watched a couple of y'all's games because it'll come on like second league. I yeah. watched a lot between like the third league teams, so we'll, they'll we'll always be watching like the second league uh, goal cast where they they go through all the games and stuff. So um, if you break through, I'll definitely be watching a lot more of you. Yeah. I didn't get to watch the game where you debuted because didn't you actually when you debuted? Didn't you actually get like a lot of minutes because you came in yeah you know, early I, in the I second can't... half or in the first half even? No, I I came in minute fifty four. Yeah. 54 so I got almost the whole second half actually it was really nice I actually won a PK I played I, I came in as a left center back in the line of three and I got moved to the right center back in the line of three in the last eight minutes I ended up actually playing as a striker which was uh, <laughs> pretty interesting as well so uh, <laughs> I don't know which one do you prefer do you prefer not striker do you prefer right center back or left center back I mean I, I want to say striker but since you took that <laughs> option away uh to be honest I prefer left center back just because I love to do this little hit movement where I cut in. Oh my from gosh! Left I, inside, yeah. and then once I'm in the middle, I have my right foot to pass left, right, long balls. You know, I just feel more comfortable doing the hit movement with my left foot, and then cutting and dribbling in with my right. I'm sure you, Johan. I'm sure you. Yeah, and and I think you know which one I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, this was annoying. Well, why they why they put you at striker though? For real though, because they needed a goal. Because, no, needed a goal. Okay. Yeah, we need a goal. We were we were down, we were down four one, and we actually ended up coming back four three. Yeah, four three, or three. Yeah, four three, and uh, and yeah, they needed a goal, so they sent the super striker. That's really that's really all I can say. I'm I, I'm not a bad striker. I can score goals. I can genuinely score goals. I'm aggressive. I can. I can I can somewhat shoot to to be honest for my position, you know. Score goals, I can somewhat shoot. That's a beautiful yes. sentence, right? No, there. no, but like for my head, with my head, like I'm really good with my head. I'm really aggressive in the box. I'm I'm not afraid to get dirty, you know. I got I got this little I got this little quality where I just little tap ins. I'm always I can find the right position. <laughs> so it, it, yeah, a little tap ins. Like, you know, as I say, a goal is a goal. It doesn't matter if you score in. 30 yard banger or two foot tap, you know, it's okay. Facts. That was Facts the same, though. but I'm sure you know, Johan. Yeah, yeah, I know how it is. That's, I mean, I know that us in the 018 group would have loved someone who could come up and help us in moments like that. I mean, obviously, you know, you had me, Tim, guys like that, you can score goals already, but you weren't going to put the little striker to help you. You know, if you put the little <laughs> striker to help you, then you were down bad. You practically already lost the game, you know, or yeah, even worse, so Judd. Yeah, you put Judd up yeah. Anyways. <laughs> Yeah, you know, what's hey, what's up with Judd? Where's Judd? I haven't seen him in any of these for a while. I miss Judd. The first He's one, a... the first one. Oh, my favorite ones for you is where you guys go in on Judd, like in the <laughs> academy days. Oh, my, that it brings back like nostalgia where you guys go in on Judd. Or I just remember 
the 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 team buses right you guys would just freestyle and rap and just go into judd and all these other people around um and then those times shout but where is he yeah he's, he's busy judd, being man. a college him, student man he's busy being a college student but we might have to bring him back for a couple guest episodes you guys, see, you guys have to see to what he's up to but uh <laughs> that's funny is he, is he still is, is he still as like country as ever oh yeah he's even more country now for yeah. sure he went full he's country, out bro yeah yeah full 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 country yeah for sure but no no no. let's talk about how's how's the life you 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 enjoying germany outside of football yeah of course you know i think i think in the sense it's i i see it as an amazing experience you know as i'm sure you guys folks you know being so young and being able to live all these things of living in a different country learning another language seeing different cultures meeting different people all of that is a great experience to have as a young as a young person you know and and that's the way that i see it you know personally uh personally the life it's 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 very different compared to what i what i'm used to in the us and especially what i'm used to in mexico but but it's something that i that i've been enjoying so far to say the least the german people they're they're very nice they're very polite and they follow the rules very very well you know, I think that's the, that's the one thing I have to say about about German people, uh, but definitely different from where I'm from. But I have to say that I'm a, I'm a happy man over there, especially where I'm living. I really like that we're next to the ocean, next to the water. So it's a it's in that sense, I think Kiel is a very pretty city because of. That. Yeah. Oh, nice. Look, OK. A little quick fun yeah. fact. So Nico's aunt teaches me German. Yeah. So that's a that's our connection there. But um. Yeah, but it's Germany. People think the people that are mean, but in my experience, the people have been very, very kind, very nice. But um, I want to ask you about a story. I don't know if this is true, but I overheard. I don't know when exactly this was, but I was informed that you left to Dallas, I think, or on holiday or whatever it may have been. And obviously you have a car out there. And I heard that you let your friend take care of the car or whatever it may be, or maybe go move the car somewhere else. I don't know. And he wrecked the car. Is that true or no? <laughs> so basically, basically, I'm coming back from. I have my car over there in Germany. I'm coming back from. I'm coming back from Germany to the to. I'm coming back from the U.S. to Germany, and so and uh, and I'm telling. I'm asking all these people, "Hey, can you come pick me up?" But they're it's a it's a long it's a long weekend, and they're all on holiday. They're all with their family, and there's only this one guy at the apartment complex who. Who, where I live with that I that I that I'm somewhat that I'm that I'm cool with. He's a professional handball player, and and I'm like, hey bro, can you come pick me up? He's like, I wish I don't have my car, I don't have my car. And so basically, I'm like, you know what? You can there. There's a spare key in my apartment here. You can go and take the keys to my car, the spare keys to my car, and you can can you come pick me up? And and he and I was like, can you also put some gas in it? I'll pay you back. No worries. And so basically he goes, put some gas in it. And while he's getting gas, he's pulling out. Someone rear ends him from behind. And so someone, someone rear ends him from behind. He comes, pick me up and the rear end is a little messed up. I have to go fix it and all that. But at the end of the day, it was nothing, nothing big. Just uh, things that happen, you know, life happens. You know, the guy did nothing wrong. It's not like he went out and partied with it and drank or anything like that. Nothing bad happened. It's just life happens. Got it fixed. Thankfully I have good insurance over there. Wasn't, wasn't, wasn't a big problem at all. It's good. It's a funny story. <laughs> it's a, uh, I, I definitely had a, I definitely had a laugh once it was all over. You know, I wasn't even mad at him, you know, I was like, you know, it's, what can you even do? Like, it's not, it's not like he was, it's not like, I guess I said, it's not like he was using it for a reckless reason. He was getting gas and coming to pick me up. You know, he felt really bad and uh, we got it all figured out without any hassle. Just that, this like German bureaucratic stuff. It takes a long time, and you have to be very orderly. If not, they don't really like it. So that that was a whole process in itself. And I needed. Before uh, before we start wrapping this up with the success question and kind of how we wrap every episode up, um, I want to ask you if you remember where you were when you got the call that you uh, were gonna get offered. I think a contract by Kiel. I was with you, man. We were we were down. We were down. What's the high school's name? Keller High School. 
we were down in Keller High School. That, I mean, that's where we, we train there very often during the, the pandemic. Me and Johan were training buddies during the pandemic. You, me, uh, Ricardo, shout out to him, uh, Ricky, and uh, Jogo, Jogo as well. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, we were training. I just, I get a call from my agent. He gives me the news, and I go, I go to, you know, I was excited. I go to Johan. First thing Johan tells me, congratulations. Now let's get back to work. You got to work, puppy. Let's go, let's go, let's go. You know, and uh, and that's and that's how it was. That's how it happened. And, oh, man, I was so happy. I was so happy. I, I remember that day very, very clearly. It was really, really nice. Yeah, now you fought your way through the 19s. Now you're, I mean, made, made yeah, your it, it was debut, a whole, so. It was a whole process, but to be honest, COVID was tough. I don't, I don't know if you guys were affected by COVID at all, but, you know, going a whole other year without really truly any games, I I only got to play six games for the U19s, and with that was enough to get pulled up to U23s really quickly. But with the U23s, I couldn't make the jump from the U23s to the first team without playing at least a few games, and I had to wait six months for that to happen six seven months for that to happen and after i started getting games that's when i started to get pulled up in a in a very serious way with the, with the first team and actually the the re, the first reason why the, the the first chance i got with the first team was because one of the the first team players got sick and i was the only player on the second team that had a that had the vaccine already and i was able to get moved up without any covid restrictions and basically and, and apart from being one of the better prospects in the in the second team so I got pulled up and I did, I took my chance, did it amazing. And after that, it's been, it's been history and no one's taken that from me. You know, as I always told my dad, once I told him, once I get the opportunity, I'm, I'm going to stay there in the first team and they're not going to take me out no matter what. And they're going to try to take me out. Like, you know, I'm staying there. I'm finding a way I'm getting stuck. I'm getting dug in. Yeah. I like that. That's what I always respected about your mentality. It's, it's always like being Guerrero, like a, like a fighter for sure. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm always, I'm always attentive. I'm always attentive to, to what you're doing. Always supporting you. You know. Yeah, that. me so, too, bro. But me um, too for both of you, for both. Yeah, of you. that's also oh, the thing about COVID, that. though. It can be negative, but also like, like you said, someone got sick. So you were vaccinated, and now look at you. You got your jump into the first. Yeah, exactly. You're, you're not moving, exactly. so it can be positive exactly. and negative. But I have to ask you. You know, you've gone through some trials and tribulations. You know, you've experienced some level of success. Some might say, but. What's your definition of success and do you think you've achieved it yet? I think my definition of success is not something that you can, that you can really uh, see as reaching a certain point. Like, it reach, like I don't think for me level of success is reaching champions. No, I think level for success is objective to each person because we're all different. We're all different. I think my, my, my definition of success is reaching your full potential and knowing that you gave it your best, knowing that you did everything possible. You left it all out on the field uh, or wherever you are in school, in your job, that you left it all out there and that you reached the highest that you possibly could, that you did everything possible in your power on and off the pitch to, to make sure that you're giving the opportunity to reach the higher point. And whenever, wherever you go, wherever you get the opportunity, that you're ready for it, that you're ready to take it and that you do take advantage of it. And, and you reach as high as God, as God will give you the opportunity to reach. That's my definition of success. And the, and to be honest, I have not, I have not, I have had some success, but I have not, I've, I've yet to, to reach the success that I feel is my full potential. I think I still have a long ways to go. I still have not seen the ceiling in my, in my potential. So that's where I'm going. That's the path I'm on as a, as the same as you two are. It's an interesting answer. I think that's the first time someone has brought God into it, but I, we're all religious here, so yeah. it's good to hear that. It's refreshing to hear that. Uh, maybe we'll have you on for part two when you feel that you've reached your full potential. <laughs> that should be interesting. But um, I'll let Tan ask you kind of his uh, his follow-up questions before we wrap up. That was a good answer, though. Oh, that was a good answer. I think uh, it's a different perspective. Like you said, we're all different. So, you know, it's it's definitely subjective to, to what you're trying to reach in life and what you're trying to do. But um, – my next question is obviously chump chat. We've had a lot of guests on a lot of good guests, uh, a lot of decent guests. Um, but who do you want to see on next on chump chat? I know you're a fan. You're one of the ones about the merch, uh, but who do you want to see on next on chump chat? 
to be honest, I just want to see Judd back on this. I just want to see Judd back on the show. Like I'm not even gonna lie, those those were my favorite episodes. Those are the ones I I I lit whenever I'm driving long distance, I just put on I just put on your guys' episodes and I just love the ones where Judd are on it. You know, Judd just brings a whole new vibe to it. Uh but let's see who who else other than Judd. We gotta get Judd on maybe sure. for like a, a you, little special special episode now. A little update, a little update. You know, his love life is always interesting to listen to. You know, his life. Yeah. He's all, he's an interesting guy. He's genuinely a very interesting and really good guy with good values, in my opinion. Nah, he, he's a good guy. That's why he's our friend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, but soccer player, if you want the more the more serious answer, uh, shoot, get my brother on the show. He also has a lot to say. And right now he's going, he just got called up to the U20s qualifiers down in Honduras. He'll be leaving uh, next week. Get my brother on the show. I'm, I'm sure he has a, he might have a different perspective about things, but we're wired the same. We just get to our, uh, and he he actually ended up did signing with FC Dallas, even after I didn't end up signing with FC Dallas, you know? So it might be yeah. an interesting thing to talk about. Shout out to Anya. I think he has a lot of similarities with Jogo for me and, and now with Tanner signing 100%. with FC Dallas. So, so yeah, it'd be yeah. an interesting one. It's a yeah, it's an interesting one. Yeah. All right. You got anything else, Dan? No, nah, that's it. I appreciate you coming on, bro. This is a good episode. I hope no, you're enjoying the, the offseason. Best of luck next year for sure, though. Uh, make sure our fans stay tuned. Uh, big things coming. Obviously, we have the Chum Chat Blessing works for everybody. So now that Nico's yeah. been on, the Chum Chat Blessing, big things can happen. Expect that Chum first Chum team blessing. debut soon. So so we'll see. <laughs> Chum Chat uh, Blessing. Love to see it. Yeah, the Chum Chat Blessing is coming your way for sure, but... Ladies and gentlemen, if you like this content, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. His Instagram will be popped up throughout the whole episode. Thanks to our editor, Anthony. So shout out to him. This episode is presented by BET Online. And um, as we always say, go find your success. Deuces.